So down here, most of the vehicles that you see on the road are Hyundai's, Toyotas, a couple Mercedes from time to time. Um, but that's the majority of it. When you look, there are some Chryslers every once in a while, but they're Jeep, like Grand Cherokees or something like that. They're not anything like uh, the other Jeeps. I seen a couple Minis, but they were not very popular. Um, I did see some Ford Escapes, some Ford Explorers, a couple F-150s. There was a couple Raptors here. I didn't see anything outside of the normal. They have a few like manufacturers here that I've never seen before. One has like a like an oval, and then it's got like a like an ocean thing in it. It looks like almost like an Oldsmobile symbol, except it's different. I've never seen them before. Uh, most of the Hyundai's and Toyotas here are most of the Hyundai's and Toyotas here um, are either sedans like four-door sedans or they are uh, some kind of transport vehicle and they cover the road in the Dominican Republic uh, they are literally everywhere here and uh, the people here that do have Fords they love them I seen like a like a like a Ford there was a Ford Ranger i seen uh, a bunch of Ford Explorers and Ford Escape and a bunch of like uh, older 543 valve F-150s. There was, a, there was a bunch of those, like a, not a bunch, a handful of those. And there was quite a few newer Raptors uh, in the middle of uh, like the city where it looked like it was kind of uh, popular. The populace was up there, but it wasn't very like high end. There were some nicer complexes in the middle of the city where they had these nicer vehicles and stuff but they were not um, anything to really brag about. And when I was talking to our guide, uh, it's, it's about $17 a gallon for fuel here, uh, diesel. Uh, gasoline is closer to $20 a gallon. And he said for $5,000, an American could move here and buy a big piece of land and a big, uh, nice, nicer home than, than most people have here and they would live completely uh, comfortable. For $20,000, you can buy acres and acres and acres of land with a home that's already built or have a new home built. And uh, for thirty dollars to $40,000, you could uh, do that and have like private security and stuff as well. So living here is much, much cheaper than in most other places in the world. Um, and the food seems more fresh here. I can eat sugar and treats and stuff like that here and I don't get like a headache and stuff like I normally do when I'm in the States. Uh, I find their food to be a little bit more tasteful, a little bit more natural here and less uh, chemically. No, you know, more of it's like uh, organic, homemade, uh, like cacao and seasonings and things like this. Their coffee is much stronger and it's kind of like a smoother tasting coffee than our coffee in the United States. Now, I don't want to take anything away from the United States. I'm uh, I, I'm, I'm all about America, don't get me wrong, but this is a beautiful place and they don't do a lot of the stuff that we do to our foods and um, the way we treat people and stuff. They're here, people are, are, are a lot nicer. They have some bad people here, don't get me wrong. You gotta, you drive around here and you see armed people with shotguns on the streets. You see them carrying pistols in the streets and stuff like that because they know they're, there's no, the, the police are, the, are more of the crooked people here than the people themselves are. But also at the same time, because there are not a lot of people on the road here, uh, or not a lot of police on the road here, uh, there's not a lot of people out, like police out making sure bad things aren't happening. So more bad things can happen here. So that's why civilians are armed here. It's a different world here. Uh, you either get in with the right crowd, it's a respectful crowd, and they kind of look out for you and make sure you're okay and stuff like that. Or you get in with the wrong crowd and you could risk losing your life and ended up ending up in a... Uh, uh, prison here that we were shown today for uh, the majority of what's there is murderers and stuff so it's kind of uh, what do you want to do and this is only two days in and I've seen so much and learned so much about it every 12 days the, the workers here on the, on the uh, resort make about $300 they make about $25 a day and that's including like tips and things like that uh, so it's very difficult here to live and make a living if you're not somebody you have to be somebody own a business be in construction or something like that if you're just a regular worker here in the dominican republic you you struggle you don't make a lot of money you can't afford fuel and stuff a lot of mopeds a lot of like 100 cc 125 150 cc bikes on the road 
there's a lot of cars, but there's a lot of mopeds and, and small motorcycles and stuff as well because it's very hard to afford fuel here to be able to get from point A to point B. Uh, there's more to come, but this is just my initial two-day thoughts.